yeah, I'm going to start with waves. So let's take, let's imagine, let's imagine we've got, we want to make a painting of our local coast. And we've got this chunk of rock coming out, something like this, okay, just making it up as I go along. Chunk of rock here. And my initial, um, my initial thoughts are about this area here taking a wash. This area of rock will take a much stronger paint, okay? But the area I want you to think about is the area here that will be left white for most part of this, for, for the most part of this painting. So imagine all this area here, just to explain the obvious, this is gonna be frothy foaming lashing white waves okay perhaps rolling in from rolling in like this a little bit if, if we can make it look that way um and then this area down here will, will be uh, another colored wash color is color does matter i think when it comes to um seascapes i tend to like uh the idea of using um greeny blues uh that sort of marina blue you know or rather marine blue um so i would pick up i'd be considering colors like phthalo green or viridian and ultramarine blue or phthalo green and phthalo blue even but um on top of those two colors guess what where i'm gonna go what were we talking about earlier blue and green are closely related a bluey green color is looking to be um, controlled by its opposite complementary, which of course is a sort of orangey red. Um, so let's prove that for a moment. I'm going to pick up, picking up ultramarine blue here, just out of camera, and I'll put in. Just got a big flat brush here. It's all about um, large use of large brushes, and working as quick as you can keep it fresh and loose looking. Remember, there is an opportunity to, to texture uh, all our big washes. If you keep pushing paint around, as long as it's only one color, when I know there's two colors in this, but they're so closely related, it looks like one color. Um, if you keep pushing that around, you can actually um, impress upon that mix or upon the paper surface some shape. I'll show you what I mean. If I take a little bit of water out of this brush, I can create what might be movement in the sky. That might be cloud shape. Um, so this thirsty brush is lifting shapes out of my sky. Would add to this type of scene. We're, we're talking about a scene with lots of movement in it. So, but don't go too busy. Um, every painting requires a flat, peaceful area. You can't go busy here, busy here, and busy here, okay? Um, the, the obvious mix would be, um, um, for this scene, would be busy here and less busy here. So there's an area of busyness coupled, sandwiched, I should say, by an area of relative flatness. So even the water down here will have some strong single shapes movements to them, but the busyness is... Um, reserved for this area here in the middle of the sandwich, the sandwich filler, okay? Um, I'm gonna do the rocks next because to get the effect of water and waves coming in here, oops, let me just take a little bit out of that because that might be the top of my wave. Um, yeah, to get the effects of um, light against dark, because that's what crashing waves are all about, uh, we must go dark. I'm picking up burnt sienna and the burnt sienna will be used in the um, in the water down here as well in a bit. So ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. And with the same brush, I'm just going to create some sort of rock face. Note, um, note how the uh, brush takes a, creates a sort of inference of rock strata. This is rocks don't sort of you don't want to be using multi-directional brush strokes when you're dealing with hard rock faces. 
like this. Sorry about the rattling. It's my easel that I'm attacking with some vigor. Um, sorry, I mean my palette, I mean, sorry. Yeah, you want to keep these shapes, the odd one like that over the top to define an edge, yes. But mostly this stuff is, um, is directional, very directional. This slight diagonal here. And, um, find my, I can find my credit card. Might want to scrape out a couple of these shapes. Um, so I'll, I'll put another uh, rock just out of the out of the water about there. Now make sure you're happy. See, I can't get a clean edge there because this is still wet. But that's no bad thing in a way. I could put replace those later when that has gone dry. A little bit of um, leaching into the background is no bad thing when you're dealing with uh, softness of water. So here and then I, perhaps if I want to do a little bit more scraping, I'll do it here. But I'm thinking about this. So it's as much about the surrounding of your water and wave scenes as it is about the waves themselves. If I can, if I get a minute, I'll do a simple, um, simple waveform you, that we could imagine being on a beach and, and looking at. Now, going to do next, so I'm ignoring this area here for the moment. I'm going to leave this white paper, okay? Um, but now I'm going to do the water in front of this scene. Picking up, uh, let me show you, it's easier. This is that phthalo green, okay? This is ultramarine blue. There's the big mix I made earlier. Um, this is ultramarine blue. Now, I could start with that, uh, with just those two, two colors, because one, a little, one little addition to learning those complementaries is that these two are actually close together in terms of um, characteristic. Blue and green are very similar colors. They're close to each other. They're neighbors. So you have to, and that's why I put, lay my palette out like I do. But so you have to go across, if, if, we, if we could see the color wheel, we go across to this color here, the warm color, which is an orangey red, okay? Um, I'm, I'm gonna start without the orangey red in the mix for the moment, because I want those big thrusts of paint as they come, as the wave comes crashing up to the uh, rocks here. I pick up a little bit of blue on its own from time to time, so it's not just a single color. Now's the time to go in for the introduction of a, 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 some of that burnt sienna. So I'm picking up a bit of burnt sienna. I'm just pushing it into the um, brush fibers on my palette surface. And before that gets too much of an opportunity to dry out here, this is really important. You quickly clean the brush, okay? But leave a lot of water in it. Now here, here's the trick. I land the brush here on the white of the paper and I scrub at this edge, okay? Just in certain places keeping the movement of this, of this water upwards into the rock face like this. Whoops. So you can, because what, what, um, what um, very um, busy water will do is soften hard edges. So in a moment, you'll see me re-establish the hard top edges of the rocks, but um, and how that plays off against the soft edges of the rocks that are being hit by the water. So it's a playoff of soft and hard edges. Couldn't be a better example of um, playoff between soft and hard edges than, than this type of painting. So we'll come into here and I'm scrubbing really hard with the brush. So I'm using um, a brush that I'm not too bothered about. It's, an act it's actually an acrylic painter's brush for acrylic paints. Um, and I'm brutal, absolutely brutal with the brush. Okay, so let's take perhaps even some of that will just fly into the into the background a little bit there. Now you can, I, I see some watercolorists do this and I, and I don't see why not. I'm not, I, I don't believe in, in, in rules. Um, I see a lot of um, watercolorists do this. They'll pick up some white gouache as long as it's all still wet. Don't do, don't, whatever you do, do not, what I'm about to do, too late when it's all gone dry. You need to do it while it's wet. Take some white gouache, 
apply it to those areas we were we were creating against there and do the similar type of brush uh, mark here okay push it into the wave like this perhaps something behind that rock because the sea continues behind this area over there that's pushing up areas like this and really you know you know apart from a, a, a little bit of shadow in the water when it's gone dry and as i say redefinition of the top of the rocks that is it that that's that's waves against rocks one of a hundred if not 200 300 examples of waves um you know we can do this further down the road again folks and maybe the next time we would uh, we would look at a different type of, of wave as i say if i very quickly i'll do um the the the, um, the, the basics for a um a, 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 a rolling wave so let me just finish this off there's ultramarine blue there's the burnt sienna again here i've used one brush for this just one brush okay um yeah what i was saying was we might just want to re-establish a couple of hard edges somewhere near the top of these rocks bit of burnt sienna bit of blue in there that's another little shape here it's yours to design it is it is yours to design as you, as you go through it. Um, feel free, have, have fun designing your, 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 your scene. There we are. Um, I'll put that aside for a moment. Very quickly look at uh, so a rolling wave would be something more like this. I'll paint it very directly again. I use the, I should be able to use the same brush for most most of these demonstrations. Um, the same aqua marine type colours. If you think about the top edge now, okay, rather than what what I'm actually painting. Uh, um, I'm coming in here. This is a mix of ultramarine blue again and um, phthalo green. You do need to consider the scale. You'd expect the depth of this nearer wave to be uh, deeper. This this section here, okay? Maybe some flatness somewhere, not too much. But the the uh, waves behind that will be a, a smaller version, of course. So something like this, or oh, let's, I tell you, let, why don't we establish the, let me just do one wave for the moment. I think you get the gist of what I mean. You leave a couple of striations of white back there, then that infers a few extra waves coming towards us. But the top, this is now the top of the wave, okay? Various things you can do. You can, um, one that I, I, I like using the handle of the brush for things. I use it in my tree trunks and um, bits and pieces. But if you've got a, if you can, you, you should always use a lot of paint. Always use a lot of paint. I think almost regardless of what you're painting. There are only one or two situations where I don't, don't pick up rich paint. Um, get the paint out of your tubes and onto your paper. Use paint. So there's this sort of effect you can you can get. You know, remember, this is a tumbling. This is the crest of the wave, and it's tumbling towards us. Okay, and you can soften areas because there's a lot of hard edge there at the moment. And there's there's nothing wrong with a little bit of hard edge in these situations, but um, there will be a lot of soft edge. The further you go back into your scene. Maybe the sea and the horizon is about there somewhere in the background. Up there somewhere like that. Um, and you'd have a little crop of land over here. A little crop of land over here somewhere like that. Um, and this nearer wave perhaps crashes down. Crashes down onto a a sandy area, pick up a little bit of raw sienna, lots of water, a 
and pull some of that green into it. Pull this way. Vertical brush strokes, horizontal brush strokes. You can imagine that 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 um, wave crashing onto a sandy or shingle type sort of beach there. But the more you intensify this color in here, and you can keep, you can go back and forth, you can go back in, um, and you probably do need to have some of the warm burnt sienna in this. It, it, this is the shadow underside that I'm that I'm putting in here. The shadow underside of the uh, wave. It's surprising how dark you need to go. But don't go dark, 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 or from one side to the other. Choose a spot. Choose an area of that shadow area that's darker than the rest. Okay, so maybe here, like that, somewhere like that. Um, and then the movement of water might give you sort of shapes like this also. You could break, you, I mean, that's a very blunt, that's a very sort of... Um, sudden stop of, of wave. You, you probably need to break that down into um, more waves. Let's put a little bit of warmth somewhere in there as a reflection of what's in front of it. Let, let's modify the white crest of the wa wa wave a little bit because it's a little too bright in places. There. Really becomes a, a job for uh, strength tonal strength as much as color strength let's let's allow that to almost get through the crest of the wave about there but you know that's a very quick example that's the basis of it that's the bones of of how we um of how we would paint crashing waves so I suggest one thing you do is, is dig out a, a scruffy old brush to practice a lot of these things. Because you could do the same with, uh, with other brushes, of course, you know. Um, but to get the confidence to paint this way, I think you need to probably be using not your best brushes. So there we are. I hope that's, that's helpful, folks. Plenty of movement, okay? And, and what you've got to consider, of course, we all know one thing about the sea. Is it's it's the flattest thing on the planet, but we so therefore there's a lot of horizontal obviously, but that's not going to work on its own. We need to create this sense of vertical, the drop of water. I mean the fall, sorry, the fall of of water gives us the vertical that this dominant horizontal so uh, 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 so desperately requires a little bit of the fall, the vertical, from the wave against the horizontal. Okay. Probably do another one. Um, I might need to take a break between these things at some point. Um, I'll go to the next say, uh, item, and I'm probably going to do the flowers. Hi, thanks for watching, and um, please remember to hit the subscribe button. If you want uh, notifications, automatic notifications, as and when I upload new videos, then please remember also just to hit that little bell button. And uh, thanks for watching.